Hey everyone, it's Jojo, and I know that my channel is primarily Beyblade related, but this week I've decided to make it Yu-Gi-Oh! themed. So I've been catching up on Yu-Gi-Oh! on Netflix. It's an anime and a card game that I watched um, like 13 years ago when I was 13. I'm 26 now. And at the end of Season 1, I really liked the Dungeon Dice miniseries. I thought that was a really cool concept. I like tabletop games, figures, cards, all that kind of stuff. But they didn't really expand on that in the anime or as an actual game. So I decided to pick up Dungeon Dice Monsters. You got a lot of boosters right here, even a special two-back right there in the middle, and the actual Dungeon Dice Monsters uh, starter set on the right. So I got a lot of unboxings ahead, and in this video, I'm actually going to unbox the Dungeon Dice Monster starter set again on the right and show you what this game is all about. So here we have the Yu-Gi-Oh! Dungeon Dice Monster starter set and this comes with everything you need to start playing Dungeon Dice Monsters. This is by Mattel and I believe this came out around 2002-2003 so like 13 years ago, over 13 years ago. So let's take a closer look at the packaging. It is a little bit beat up. This Again, this is very, very old, 13 years ago. Here we have uh, Joey Wheeler and Yugi Mocho right there displayed for you. And of all of the figures and cards, the crest counters, the dice, and all that stuff. So we have Vorse Raider, Thunderball, Knight of Twin Swords, uh, Strike Ninja, Gear for the Iron Knight, and Buster Blader. And this is the Monster Lord. And the two crest counters, again, the crest dice. And a little graphic of the gameplay right there. And on this side, again, showing you a graphic of the game. And again, the contents. We have the field, six monster figures, one monster lord figure, seven cards, 12 dice, two crest counters, 10 dungeon pieces, one marker sheet, and one instruction booklet. And it also says that it has uh, 137 uh figures and cards to collect in the series, although I'm not sure if that's quite accurate because it wasn't really uh, expanded in the Americas, I don't think so. Uh, but I think there's a lot more in Japan. Uh, so anyway, I think I'm going to show you all the stuff in this set and kind of give you an overall uh, view of how to play the game. Not, I'm not going to go into too much detail. So I think after this video, or maybe later on into the week, I'm going to show you actual gameplay of Dungeon Dice Monsters. I'll be playing that with someone, and yeah. So let's get this open. I'm pretty excited about this. And this is everything in the Dungeon Dice Monsters starter set. So of course you have your instructions, which I'm going to be going over a little bit throughout this unboxing. And of course you have the field, or the dungeon field. A uh, really nice quality paper, it's pretty thick, nice glossy in the back, so it's not easily terrible or anything like that. Uh, really good, really good playing mat. And we have your dice for your Dungeon Dice Monster game. And these are level 1 dice. These help you summon uh, level 1 monsters, it also helps you build up your crest pool. And these are level 2. Level 3 is yellow and level 4 is green. So the higher you go, the more difficult it is to summon higher level monsters. I think this has 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, uh, 1 stars, so it's uh, you're more likely to summon a, one, a level 1 monster. I think this only has uh, 3. These are 3 stars right here. So your chances go down with every level. I think this only has two. Yeah, two, st uh, two level three stars. And this only has one. So level four is um, the more powerful monsters, of course. And they are powerful, but you are more unlikely, you are unlikely to summon a level four um, on the first try. Uh, so yeah, those are the dice. We have your dungeon pieces right here where you place them uh, um, in front of your uh, monster lord domain it has to be touching the starting points or this is another starting point right here really quick on the playing field you can see there's like a thicker blue outline that is the basic for this game and the larger the actual the entire map is the advanced so the more you collect figures and cards, 
the better the game will be so you could use more of the map. But if you only have this set, it's suggested just to uh, use this middle part right here because um, the, the map is too big just for these six figures. Moving on, we have the damage counters. Each one is worth 10. And we also have little cutouts of the monster lords if you don't have this guy. It only comes with one. So you, the other player is going to have to use the little cutouts for those. And these are your crest counters. They kind of look like abacus. Uh, and you can see the crests right here. I wish they were in like different colors. You could see a little bit better. And you can see the numbers up top. So put them all to the right. And if you collect one, you just slide it over. It just basically helps you keep track of all your crests. And we got your cards. So this is the monster lord along with the figure. For a small figure, they're, they're about two inches, two and a half maybe, uh, depending like maybe on the bigger ones. These aren't too bad. Okay paint job. They kind of remind me of hero clicks, but they are made out of like really soft plastic, so they, they kind of are easily uh, to break. And I actually did break one already with Strike Ninja. I don't know if you can see the super glue on his feet, because when I pulled it out from the packaging, the base basically just came off from his feet, so it has to super glue it back. Uh, yeah, so the figures are really nice, pretty detailed, uh, nicely painted. I just think the material isn't very quality, uh, and that's all. So that's the Monster Lord. Your Vors Raider, which is this guy right here. Looks really cool. really like his weapon. So he's a level 1, and his ability is... Without spending an attack crest, this monster can attack. And during a battle, this monster can add an additional 20 attack power points to itself if it attacks a monster from the Beast Tribe. So I guess a certain monster on the opposing team. Here's a graphic on the back. And we have Thunderball. This is level 3, and he's right here. This guy. And his ability, if you spend three of these crests, which are magic crests, Thunderball moves straight forward until it hits a monster or item and destroys it. It does not move into this the destroyed monster's face. If Thunderball doesn't hit anything, it moves until reaching a dead end. So it's kind of like a bomb, pretty much, if it runs into one of your monsters. And Knight of Twin Swords, this one's actually pretty good. And it's this guy right here. And his ability, he's a level 2, warrior. Knight of Twin Swords can move two squares for each, uh, for each progress crest spent, basically movement. And when this monster performs this effect, he can't make a regular movement. If you spend two of the attack crests, this monster can perform two attacks against one monster for every two attack crests spent. To use this effect, an even, an even number of attack crests must always be spent. However, this monster does not have to use all of its attacks. So, based, yeah, attacking twice, that's pretty awesome. And Gearfred the Iron Knight, pretty popular monster from this series. And here he is right here. It was really nice. Really, really cool. I really like the paint job on that one. So his ability, he's a level 2. If you spend 3 of these crisps, which are, which are traps, this effect only works when your monster lord gets attacked. You could sacrifice this monster and you won't receive any damage until the end of the turn. And if you spend three without spending a defense crest, this monster can defend itself. So that's that's really good. You could basically sacrifice him to protect your monster, uh, monster lord. And uh, Strike Ninja, level three, this guy right here, the broken one. <laughs> Looks really cool. I really like the figures. I just don't really like the graphics on the cards. They kind of look too. Uh, they're C they're CG generated, but this one looks okay. Some of them aren't and like like this. And it's like so plain, like reboot esque type of uh, CG. Uh, but anyway, uh, Strike Ninja level three. Strike uh, if you move, Strike Ninja can move three squares for each progress 
Crest spent. When this monster performs the effect, he can't make a regular movement. He spent three of the Trap Crests. During one turn attacking, during one turn attacking or item effects don't work on this monster, so it get, negates any of the um, effects basically. At this time, other monsters can go through him. So when you use traps, you can use it on your opponent's turn, basically like a counter. And um, there are magic crests which I showed on Thunderball. This could only be used on your turn. And yeah, I th think that is... Oh no, no, we have one more. <laughs> Buster Blader. So this guy, I really like this figure. He's a level 3 warrior. Look at that sword. Awesome. And this monster will not be affected by any attacks or effects produced by a monster from the Dragon Tribe. That's awesome. <laughs> so those are all the cards. And... Let's do like a sh like a basic overall tutorial on how to play the game. So this is how you would set up the basic game. Once again, the basic game is just the inner square. You can see the blue thicker outline. We're just going to do that for for now, just to make it simple. We, we have your monster lord and another one over here. Actually, that's not supposed to be there. Um, so this is from the little uh, marker sheet right here. You just kind of cut it out or pop it out because there's only one Monster Lord figure and you put that right there. That's basically, this is their domain, the sh also known as the starting part for when you start building the dungeon pieces. And in the instructions, it tells you that player one is red, which is right there, and player two is blue. And player one gets Buster Blader, Strike Ninja, and Gear Freed the Iron Knight. And player two gets Knight of Twin Swords, Thunderball, and Vorse. Raider. So each player decides who goes first and blah 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 blah. So let's just let's just say that player one is going first. And you get to decide which dice you want to roll first. Player one's monsters only has level two and two level threes. So it would be pointless for me to roll a level one unless I wanted to build up my crest, but we're not gonna do that. So let's just roll for level two which are these dice right here. And I'm gonna try and summon Gearford the Iron Knight. And I did not get any summoning crest. So when you get two summoning crests, which is this, this right here, then you get to summon. But I got one magic crest, in an attack crest, and movement, and or uh, progress. And you can see it says times two. That means you get two of those. So you take your crest counter, and it's upside down. So I got two progress, one, two, two attack, and one magic. And that pretty much ends my turn. I couldn't summon anything. I don't put any pieces on the on the, uh, the dungeon pieces in the dungeon. So it is the my opponent's turn. Player blue, I guess you could say player two. And player 2 has a level 1, level 2, and level 3. So once again, level 1 is more likely to get summoned because it has more summoning crests on it. It has 4 out of 6. So we're going to try to summon Vorse Raider. And wow, we got all 3. So basically you only need 2 and we summoned Vorse Raider. So when you summon, you take any one of these pieces Player 2 uses blue to distinguish um, which are yours. And you can attach it to any side of the Monster Lord's domain. So it could be right here in front of it to the side. You can't do diagonal because you can't move diagonally. So you wouldn't be able to do that. You actually have to do it this way. And you can see there's a star right there. And that's where you would put your monster. So I got all three summoning crests. I did not get any of the other crests, so I don't put anything in my uh, crest counter. And now it is my opponent's turn. And I'm going to try again for level two, Gear for the Iron Knight. And no, I only get one. But I did get two more attack crests, 
and one magic for uh, for that. So again, you just two and that. And it's kind of useless right now because I don't have any monsters on the field and I can't do anything. <laughs> that's the fun about, uh, well that's a chance when it comes to dungeon dice monsters. You could roll really well or you could just like roll crap the whole time and not get any monsters. But that's why you want to get more boosters to build up your, um, your team of monsters and all that so you have a better chance of summoning. So again, it's my opponent's turn, and I'm going to try and summon Knight of Twin Swords, which is level 2, which are the blue ones. And I got two. Wow, blue is really, really lucky. So two summoning crests and one magic. So you want to put one magic right there, one magic crest, and you get to pick another one. And I believe you could just, you attach it to any of the pieces. So I could put it here or here. But you want to get as close as possible to your opponent. As you can see, I'm very, very close to that guy already. And then you place him on the star. And you keep going until you build a really cool dungeon on your field. So for instructional purposes, let's say that... Let's say I'm already, let's see, let's say I'm already here. And we got this guy right here. So if you're in front of the monster lord, you could attack directly. And you win by attacking the monster lord and taking all of his life points. The monster lord has three life points, so basically if you attack him three times directly. And that's how you win the game. Pretty much that's like a basic uh, <laughs> overall of the game. There are special abilities of each of each guy, so of each uh, monster. I think this is the one that um, if you sacrifice this guy, it negates all the damage taken to your monster lord, so you could be pr protected. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I think this game is going to be a lot of fun, especially when we open up the dungeon more and open up all the boosters, which I'm going to do after this. And yeah, we'll do gameplay. We'll do like an actual gameplay, not just this crappy tutorial I'm giving you right now. So that is pretty much it for my unboxing of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s Dungeon Dice Monsters. Uh, I'm really excited for this game. I've always liked Yu-Gi-Oh! and the Dungeon Dice in particular. I'm just kind of upset that they didn't really expand on that. But I do have more boosters, I do have like a special 2-pack I got from um, like Hong Kong or something, or Japan. It was only a um, J uh, Asia release, so that's pretty exciting. And yeah, we'll do a full game after I have all the boosters and more in my collection. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about Yu-Gi-Oh! Zenjin Dice Monsters. And let me know if there's anything I left out, any tips you want to give, give me, and all that stuff. Um, feel free to comment in the comment section. I'm open to any feedback. Once again, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to favorite and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time with more. See you soon.